Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explore a different method of finding the torque. It's actually the same method, but in disguise, you'll see in just a moment what it is. Here's the way we've been doing it in the past. Let's say we have a beam. The beam is attached to a point right here. We need to find the torque about point A. We have a force acting on the other end of the beam with magnitude F. And the way we traditionally have done it is we set that the torque is equal to, now notice that this force will cause a counterclockwise motion to the beam if it was allowed to move the beam. That means it's a positive torque because that's a convention. So it would be plus the force acting on the beam at the distance L. But what we do want here, we want to multiply this times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation. So this would be the perpendicular distance D right here. And then all we had to do here is find out what d is equal to in terms of the angle and length of the beam. Notice that this forms a right triangle. And what that means is we can then find d in terms of the hypotenuse L and the angle here opposite the, to the side d. That means that d cannot be expressed as the hypotenuse L times the sine of the angle theta. And torque then becomes equal to the force times L times the sine of the angle theta. But we can do it another way. For example, what if I just want to find the portion of the force that causes the torque? If I now take the same force right here and I find the vertical component of the force, let's call this F sub Y, and I can find the horizontal component of F here, this, let's call this F sub X, notice that the horizontal component does not contribute at all to the torque because the line of action of the force goes right through the pivot point. So therefore, there's no contribution at all from the x component, the horizontal component of the force. But there is a contribution to the torque from the vertical component. Matter of fact, that's the only of the two components that contributes to the torque. So what we could also now say is we could say that the torque and again, it's a positive torque because you can see that this force would cause a counterclockwise direction of motion. So the torque can be described as the force component in the y direction, the vertical component of the force acting on the beam, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which in this case would be the length of the beam. So it would be F in the y direction times L. How do we find the force in the y direction? Well, notice we have an angle here we can identify color and let's call this angle phi and you can see then that the y component of this force can be called f times the cosine of phi so let's rewrite this and write it as the torque can now be written as f in the y direction which is the force f times the cosine of phi times l so another way to find the torque from a force acting on the beam like this, we can simply say it's the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle between the vertical and the force times the length of the beam that it's acting on. Why does that work? Why are those two things the same? Why is L times the sine of theta equal to the cosine times L? Or the cosine of phi times L? Well, notice here that theta plus phi is equal to 90 degrees. And here we have the sine of theta. So let's write the sine of theta. And if we solve this for theta, we can then say that theta is equal to 90 degrees minus phi. Which in other words, the sine of theta can also be written as the sine of 90 degrees minus phi. But sine of 90 degrees minus phi is the same as the cosine of phi. So this can be written as the cosine of phi, which then means that sine of theta is equal to the cosine of phi. So either I write the torque as the force times L times the sine of theta, or the torque is equal to the force times L times the cosine of phi. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to write this as L times the cosine of phi, because then you can see the comparison. So F times L times the sine of theta is therefore equal to F times L times the cosine of phi. So either you take the force, and you multiply that force times the perpendicular distance d, which is equal to the length of the beam, times the sine of this angle, or you write it as the force times the length of the beam times the cosine of this angle. In either case, you have the same torque contribution 
uh, to the calculation you may be making. In this case, it's only one force, but if there's multiple forces, you can take each force and simply multiply it times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the force and the vertical to the beam like that. And so now that we have this other method, you can see that sometimes it is more difficult to find the distance here, and it's sometimes easier to simply take the force and multiply times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the force and the vertical to the beam. So let's keep that in mind. I'll show you some more examples in a couple more videos to come.